three falls with a 45 minute time limit. In the red corner, 265 pound from Waxahachie, Texas, Killer Brooks. And at 245 pound in the blue corner on my left, from Mexico City, Super Sock, Jose Lothario. Two out of three falls, a 45 minute time limit. And as Boyd Pierce has told you, he's the gentleman resplendent in that black and white outfit. It's Killer Brooks of Waxahachie against Jose Lothario from Mexico and San Antonio. And of course the referee, Bronco Lubitsch, is going to have a tough time on his hands with these two head knockers. There's the bell to start the first fall in this um, two out of three fall battle. And Lothario and Brooks, who have met on a number of occasions, are facing each other here with the history behind them and the willingness to get in there and throw everything they've got. So hang on to your chairs. This ought to be a good one. Brooks, man who comes from a wrestling family. His cousin is Dick Murdoch. Murdoch's father was the fabulous Texan. Brooks' uncle was Farmer Jones or Paul Murdoch. Lothario has a way of shifting in there. One moment he's a southpaw and the next moment he's over at a normal stance with the, for the right-handed man and you never know quite how he's gonna come up. He took him down and we saw how on our side, but referee Bronco Lubitsch was on the opposite side and didn't quite make it. Lothario being pushed back with a chin lock, even though he was the man who held the hold. That's known as getting one in the whiskers, for sure. You hesitate to use a cliche like that, but how else are you going to describe what happened to him? The way Brooks looks right now with that hair all over his fa face, the hair of his head coming down into his face, and the hair on his face going up into his head, He's a mess. Ooh, but how he can mess you up with that clubbing wallop of his. Double wrist lock. Lothario trying now to move it up the back of, um, of killer Tim Brooks. He's got that hold on there well. It's an arm bar now. It starts out as one thing and he, he changes it to fit a man's position which of course is one of the reasons why Lothario is always so good is the fact that he he's not rigid he, he watches what happens in the ring and then adapts his own style to fit it oh and he oh he caught one and he threw one right back but unfortunately for Brooks he missed Brooks is hidden behind a veritable veil of hair. Whether that blow was legal or illegal is open to question. Jose's in a tough spot. right now is trying to dent him sufficiently to make it easy to pin him. He's catching him in the stomach and in the ribs and making the most of Oh, man, how he jammed him up against that turnbuckle. And 
Brooks with that loving attitude of his. There, there again, Nathario and typical Jose fashion, fighting his way out of the tough spot and fighting his way out of that corner. Bulldoggy headlock and he drove his nose down into the, into the canvas. There is a fall for Jose Lothario. This two out of three fall match. The winner, in less than five minutes, hustling Jose Lothario. We'll be back in a moment after this word from the studio. The start of the second fall of this two out of three fall match, and Killer Brooks makes sure that he gets out of that ring, but fast as the action starts to crowd into him. He was pushing in against Jose Lothario. He was moving across the ring. He was trying to bottle Jose up in that corner. And when Jose came out of there fighting, Killer Brooks started up the aisle. So perhaps now the, the killer will recognize that Lothario is not going to be intimidated. The foot out, just was stuck outside that ropes to outside the ropes to break up the the count, it's a side headlock by Jose. He's trying to hold him so that he can pop him in the snoot like that. It's a Lothario trademark. When he gets that particular hold, he gets in there to add to it. So Lothario now has Brooks in the corner, a dangerous spot. He's got to fight when he's cornered. He may not at other times. But when he's cornered, he is, and he's trying to defend the blow that he threw, and everybody here in the Sam Houston Coliseum laid the lie right in his lap. You saw it, that arm, that elbow coming around and literally cutting his feet out from under him by hitting him in the jaw. So Jose has a problem. The grip now on the trapezius muscle is bound to be felt right down into his tips of his fingers in his left arm. Lothario has that right hand free, but you can't always throw it when you're in pain on the opposite side. You swing against the grain and you can do your own shoulder, your own arm, an awful lot of harm. Lothario's aware of it. You cannot throw a blow from every position, certainly not an effective blow. That's on the stern of Killer Brooks. So you can see his intentions, at least from that side. Thank you, Jim. And Lothario now finds Brooks uncorking with those well-placed right hands of his. Now, Brooks is a tough guy and you've got to be careful when you're in that ring because he's had enough international experience to be called a very dangerous individual. He doesn't win all of his matches, but any match in which he is engaged is going to be one in which his opponent's going to know that he was in a battle. He's got enough Texas pride, enough Waxahachie guts to always give out with his best. I don't know if Lubitsch saw him. He's, yes, he did. He's telling him to break, and he told the count. He broke the hold, but there was not enough of a break to give a break to Jose Lothario. So Lothario on the canvas. Brooks bearing down, bearing into him. And the now the call is up to 
Lothario because the longer that hold stays on there, the less likelihood it is that he's going to be able to get full service out of that left arm during the rest of this match. I think our cameraman is fascinated with the skull and crossbones. You see Lothario trying now to maneuver enough room to throw that set of knuckles on the right hand. And that was effective. He had to wait. There it is. As he turns, he's able to face into him. And, and I think he's got Brooks' eyes crossed. Uh, Leg dive at the five-minute mark as Lothario moves in to throw his weight across that ring and land on the inside of Brooks' leg. That should be the cause of Jose Lothario some good. Sure going to slow up Tim Brooks. Slow or not, there's nothing wrong with his upper body, and that was on top of the head. A blow like that will shorten the average man by two inches. Brooks on top, we could have a fall. You see his foot on the ropes, there's one, there's two, and Ontario managed to get a shoulder up. Brooks is in legal territory now, no foot on the ropes. Yes. He keeps the referee occupied by what he's doing. I don't know whether Broncos saw it or not, but that's almost academic. He did break it. So Brooks looks for Jose's jaw and finds it. There are no whiskers there to soften up any, any blow that's thrown. And watch! Lothario now, when he gets that steam behind him, and one of his favorite moves. Slash across the face. Killer Tim Brooks in trouble. As Lothario planted that fist right where it could do some good. Oh, how he dropped him. There's one. That was only one and a half because by the time that two had counted, Brooks had moved. And Jose's fans hollering for him to put the fist to him. He's got a handful of nose. But if Brooks can breathe through the mouth, why some referees are not going to object to the grip on the proboscis. Reverse chin lock. And he, uh, you notice that Jose uses it to move his weight forward, throw his weight against the side of the head and bend the axis of the neck and just keep in there. And this could turn out to be a sleep hold. It has the same effect. Not the normal manner of applying the grip, but um, an effective way to apply it if you manage to hit it properly. And Brooks takes a handful of hair to twist Jose off the top position, and Brooks is coming out. He did. Oh, 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 oh. Lothario now, coming in there with those blows, that'll make a difference. Side headlock, he's looking to bulldog him again. Oh! Did you see the way he smashed in there, the way his head snapped forward? And Tim Brooks recognizes an opportunity the moment he sees it. Here is Brooks looking to land on him. He landed. This could be a fall. No, he's not looking for the fall. He wants to make sure that Lothario doesn't come back again for the third fall. That's it. The 
second fall goes to Killer Tim Brooks. So he starts out now 12 with the advantage of being equal in falls and having laid a lot of punishment to Jose Lothario. We'll be back here in a moment. Right now we'll have this word from the studio. Well, he's holding Killer Brooks back until the bell rang for the start of the third and deciding fall. And Lothario had not risen from his knees during the intermission between falls. And right now, he is liable to be knocked down to his knees again. Oh, I tell you, these are effective blows that Tim Brooks is delivering, and they are well-aimed clubbing blows. He's not taking any chance of breaking his hand. He's using the side of his hand. He's using the side of his wrist. He's using the, uh, the forearm. He drove that headbutt in there, but he hit himself just above the eye, and he may have done himself some damage. At least it stunned him. I'm just looking to see whether uh, Brooks has knocked open his own eye with that headbutt, but uh, evidently, I, I can't see. But it has given Jose Lothario the opportunity to get after him and drive him into the ring apron. Oh, that's just the right height. And... Jose pounds away at Brooks. You notice he aimed that blow exactly where Jose uh, Jose's head caught him just a, just a few moments ago. Brooks trying to keep Jose from getting in the ring. But Brooks had better get in the ring or this uh, match is going to end with him being counted outside the ring. Jose is not officially in the ring yet. He's got one leg through those ropes, and that means he is outside. And, and as the argument continues here, Brooks is literally getting his head kicked off. Oh, man, he slammed into this ring post. I have, I, I, don't, I don't know how the ring post stood it. There's Killer Brooks. He has just hit shoulder and head into the immovable ring post. And Lothario takes off after him properly. Oh, how he is laying that wallop in there. Whether that blow was legal or not, I am not sure. He threw that from a position that almost made it below, and it seems to have given him a sudden switch in the advantage here, a front headlock, a twisting front headlock, and as he lifts up on the, on the arm, he took that head with it, and Jose now is trying to cut him down to size. It isn't necessary for a blow to always land around a man's head to be, be effective. And in this particular case, laying it into the leg can do Killer Brooks more harm than trying to hit at his jaw, which he couldn't reach now anyway. There he is again, pounding at that muscle. Jose Lothario, reverse toe Here he is. Notice how he set his leg in there. He barred that toe hold, but he doesn't need his hands to hold the leg or the foot. Lubitsch trying to keep Brooks from using the ropes to pull himself to safety, but now he has failed. So Lothario waits for Brooks to rise, and he's a little impatient at that. 
and he's trying to involve the referee, and the referee is threatening to give it to Lothario, and you can see what Brooks was trying to do, and that was to distract Lothario. He succeeded. This is the third and deciding fall, and the man who wins this wins the match. Brooks trying to set Lothario up. Oh, set him up and knock him down. Five minutes. Five minutes have gone by as Brooks comes to lay it in there. He laid it in, and this could be it. Lothario's shoulders are down, but Brooks is not satisfied with just pinning him. He is trying to beat him, humiliate him, and eliminate him. And here comes Brooks as he goes through his ritual of proving the fans that he knows he's got Lothario and he is going to end this match in a win. But Brooks turning that confidence around comes in again and Lothario hooks him. He's got him wrapped up here in a cradle hold and he's got a fall. Killer Tim Brooks just stretched his luck just once too far. And Brooks decided that since the bell had sounded, he'd better not take any more punishment. The match has ended. The winner is Jose Lothario. Referee Bronco Lubitsch has so indicated, making it official. We tell you that we'll be back here in a moment, right after we have this word from the studio.